Hey, what's up, folks? Welcome back to another 3D Hangout. My name is Noir Wes. I'm a designer here at Adafruit, and joining me every week is my brother, Pedro. Good morning, everyone. I'm Pedro Wes, creative tech here at Adafruit, and every week we're here to share 3D printed projects featuring electronics from Adafruit. That's right. This is where we combine 3D printing and DIY electronics to make inspirational projects. That is right. We are back after, feels like a month. It feels like a month. Yeah. Welcome back, everybody. We hope you are doing well, staying safe in this very hot summer <laughs> if you are in the hemisphere of summers but yeah it's good to be here if you'd like to join us during the show if you're watching on other social channels you can join us in the live broadcast chat room in our discord server the link for that is discord.gg slash adafruit so if anyone has any shout outs or anything go ahead and pull them in there and we'll uh well you can see it there in the, in the screencast uh, we'll do our usual thing where we kind of do the housekeeping in the morning and then we'll jump into this week's fun, exciting project. It combines a couple of different things. So, yeah. Hello, everyone. Good morning. Give a shout out rusty. to everybody hanging out in all the chat rooms. We were hanging out in the YouTube chat. Good morning, Connor, David Smith. Hello. We're also in the Discord at discord.gg slash Adafruit. Giving shout outs to everybody hanging out in there. Where is my tab? Good morning, Andy mm. Calloway. Good morning, Hello. Jim Hendrickson. Liz is in the house. Hello. Andy Good Calloway. Oh, and Du Esther. Good morning. 29C, where Andy's at right now. Ooh. Yes, back after. Oh man, the COVID finally got me. So we were down for a little bit as it passed through the whole family. You were out on vacation, so you had to stay a couple extra weeks to. Make sure we didn't infect you, but here we are. We're yeah. Still getting some projects out. Still got the uh, blogs and all that going. Let's get started with the show. Okay. Well, if anyone has any questions about the stuff, you can. Twenty nine C is eighty four degrees. That's. Fahrenheit. I wish it was eighty four. It's eighty eight yeah. right now, but it feels like it's yeah. hundred. Get up to ninety up down here. In the fine, fair Orlando area. Okay. Well, we'll do the housekeeping stuff. We'll jump back into the chat. So. All right. Uh, looks Start like off with we, free. Yeah, we got some free stuff. You head on over to adafruit.com slash free PCP. If you spend $149, you'll get that half-size breadboard plus an Adafruit KB2040. That's perfect for doing keyboard-related projects. It's in that Arduino Nano format. And if you spend $200 or more, you'll get the KB2040, the half-size Super Proto, and free ground shipping for U.S. Continental. That's UPS shipping. And for orders that are $2.99 or more, you get the free shipping, you get the KB2040, the half size Perma Proto, and the Circuit Playground Express, which is an awesome board that has lots of fun goodies in it, lots of sensors, NeoPixels, CapTouch, big pack, which is really nice, so you don't have to do any uh, coupon stuff. All right, uh, next up, I got the jobs board loaded up, jobs.adafruit.com. If you are in the market for a new gig, or if you'd like to publish, post up your skills for potential uh, gigs, you can do so by hitting up the jobs board, jobs.adafruit.com. It's free to do that. Cool. Given some promotions to the newsletter. This one's once a week. If you go to adafruit.com slash newsletter, you can subscribe to that and you'll get a newsletter once a week that's focused on the new products that are added to the shop. That's one way to, to keep track of all the new stuff that gets added to the shop. More newsletters, adafruitdaily.com is an assortment of different categories you can subscribe to, such as Python on hardware. This is uh, I wonder, in front of lots of people, so check that out. Thank you to everybody who's subscribing, and shout out to Ann Barella for doing up the newsletter every, every week. week. Yeah. And of course, Circuit Pilot team for adding their updates. It's always good to read read through them. And giving a shout to Paul Cutler for hosting the Circuit Python Show podcast. Check it out; it's back on the, the newest season. You can subscribe to the show on your favorite podcasting services. So check that out. Next project. All right. People are saying that YouTube is uh, <laughs> buffering, but I don't see it on my end. Oh, it does. Maybe this try. Is, uh... This is not enough. Video to maintain smooth streaming. Try Twitch. Open that thing. seems to be looking pretty good. It says that streaming quality is poor. I'm going to double check that I'm on Studio 2. Yes, I am. 
it could be just YouTube servo servo servos. <laughs> <laughs> this luckily, week's project. <laughs> yeah, luckily we're publish you know, we're posting on, on the other channels so you can check out uh, on Periscope, Twitch. on Twitter, Twitch, Facebook. LinkedIn and Facebook. So those are all fair. And uh, we uh, just as a background we use the restream IO so for letting us know. Do Westers on Twitch? Cool, cool. All right. Okay. A tip from Ali uh, from Ann Calloway says you can drop the resolution in YouTube, and that tends to help a little bit. And there it goes again. Ha! Well, you know, it's it's a part of doing these live streams. <laughs> All right. Let's go ahead and jump into this week's demos. project. Yeah, so this week's project was a fun idea from Lady Ada herself. She thought it'd be cool to use analog feedback servos to make a sort of a modern take on a two-way communication system. So for the design, uh, I got inspired by different gauges, and somehow I stumbled upon a device called a ship engine telegraph. And I remembered, oh yeah, remember those scenes in the Titanic movie where the captain would use this this thing where he would uh, it was a handle and he would follow the ship to know how fast they want to go a dead stop a full stop etc and I was like this is such a cool retro device like it'd be neat to to kind of add those design elements into this project because it's kind of what it needs to be so an analog feedback servo is kind of the hero of this thing a half a circle and what everything I've known about um, servos is that you never should really move the the servo the shaft of the servo but this one it's like yeah go for it <laughs> so it has this kind of superpower where it has an extra fourth wire and that fourth wire uh, is a, a built-in potentiometer so it's able to know what position it's in so it's a bit of like a positioning sensor in that sense uh, so we have two of these and the idea is that they're both connected over a uh, uh, Adafruit I.O. Adafruit I.O. is being used as the broker to send and receive uh, the data, you know, the servo position basically. And then in order to let the program know when it's being held and touched, we're using a piece of copper tape as a touch input sensor. And that, that takes me to the, uh, the main dev board for this one is the ESP32 S2. That's the Cutie Pie format. And it's running CircuitPython. And it has built-in capacitive touch, so there's no extra circuitry needed because it's built into the uh, the ESP chip. Uh, so here's the back of the build um, X pin on the uh, on the Cutie Pie there. So the idea is uh, you have two of these in two different rooms, so you can keep track of your friends' uh, activities. Maybe you want to get uh, together for a taco, so I hold it down, let go. And then it's sending the data, the position of the servo over Adafruit I.O. as a feed, and then this guy picks it up. So they're pretty much running the same amount of code. Um, there's just the difference between the two is that they have a little bit of difference in the minimum and maximum calibration value. Uh, so you do have to calibrate these servos to get them in the right positions. Uh, so sometimes it won't be perfect. You just got to kind of adjust uh, the value if you want to make it perfect. All right, let's say we wanted to go out for a walk. So I can move it to the... You know, two different locations, two different Wi-Fi networks, and they still talk to each other because it's using the same Adafruit I.O. Um, uh, kind of account. Um, so let's do the next one. So I took uh, 180 degrees and I segmented it off by five. So, oh, there it goes. Give it a minute to, I think I gave it a false reading. It'll kick back. It, it wants to go for a walk now. That's great. Uh, yeah, I think the, the slower you go, you give it a second to kind of go. There it goes. Uh, so then if you wanted to move this one, let's say the person on the other end wants to go for a coffee. So I'll move it all the way to coffee. And hey, it's working. Yay. So it was a lot of fun designing around this servo. And I quickly found anytime I'm designing elements for uh, a servo, it's almost always better to design your custom horn and attach it to the stock horns that it comes with. So thankfully uh, this servo comes with like three different styles of horns and the disc one 
uh, this this disc shaped horn ended up being the best because it, it kind of matches the the design of this of this horn. Um, one of the things I found is like it's it's really kind of you know there's a lot of give on that. So if uh, if you were to make this project, there's a ball bearing on the back, and that would give you like super sturdiness. And if you look at real ship engine telegraphs, they kind of have that set up where there's two uh, there's two points here. And it just gives you no play, so you have a really rigid thing. But as a prototype, it's something that's easy to print in like a couple of hours. This this design ended up working really well. Um, so the frame, the plate, all of those snap fit together, so they can still kind of come apart. And then there's just this ba this base plate here um, uh, that that kind of stands it up right. So. If you want to adjust this, you could just print this piece again and adjust the angle if you wanted to do a different viewing angle. And the fun bit was like um, these these icons here. This is just a piece of sticker paper, and I just printed it out on uh, on some 2D. project ink or uh, sticker paper. And there's a um, so these are emojis, and you it's using the open source emoji font. So you could change these out if you wanted to do some different type of t activity or maybe some letters instead of, um, and I just thought it was neat to kind of put this as a label, I needed something, so I figured, ah, it's two hands, and, you know, it's, it's, it's lovely. <laughs> Let's go for a movie. And I guess for power, I'm just running them off of this little battery bank, because it's easier that way, but the, um, the Cutie Pie powers very well off of USB computer, but if you wanted to have it plugged into the wall outlet, it would work just fine with any of those like uh, battery power supplies. I mean, cell phone power supplies, like a five volt dilly. So that's the project in a nutshell. Um, we just published the learn guide earlier this morning. So if folks want to check out more about uh, the servo, the analog feedback servos, and the, uh, yeah, Andy's well. saying <laughs> that I think so. He think Andy thinks that the real ones uh, ring a bell when you move them, so you'll know. So oh, right there, it'd be like bling. Right. Huh. Very cool. Give it a second to to go. Yeah. There it goes. Yeah. So this is a lot of fun. Check it out. Um, very kind of modular design. Um, the way that this frame snaps to the uh, to the to the faceplate is with these like tabs, and there's like, these little circles that kind of bump into them. Um, it's kind of neat. And then I'm just using regular screws and built-in standoffs to the front plate um, for this. Uh, I was able to find a 3D model on GrabCAD of this analog feedback servo, so I was able to get the position of the of the uh, of the shaft of the motor like precise, and of course the mounting tabs. So that all worked out really well. Could have spent a little bit more time designing like a thing in the background, but it's a prototype and it's kind of just proving the concept and alignment. But I think it's good for what it is. Very cool. Yeah, these are fun. I haven't seen any other projects with the analog feedback servo. So pretty neat. I've seen there's other, yeah, we've, 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 we've got them out of sync now. Let's see, there you go. <laughs> Yeah. So that's what you can do if it gets out of sync. Just a quick little uh, little nudge. Yeah, it's uh, so maybe we could write some logic <clears throat> to, to avoid yeah. spamming, but there, it's all customizable. You can change the uh, the delays um, mm -hmm. from between sending and receiving um, the data. So you can always do that. Yeah, so um, it's supposed to be like a telegraph. So it was supposed to use like on um, Titanic. So like the lower deck would, or the mm -hmm. higher deck would mm -hmm. you know, communicate with the lower deck what they want to do. Uh, in terms of like a household, you have you know it's lunchtime. You can tell the kids, hey, oh, you know. yeah, that's a good idea. It's time to eat, kids. Yeah, some little little love taps. It's a nice little way to communicate between floors. Yeah, or yeah, uh, offices. I didn't think of that. Yeah, that's a good yeah, idea. Yeah, uh, you know how like in the office, right at what is it? Right at five o'clock, mm -hmm. the uh, Phil rings the bell. <laughs> and so <laughs> instead of doing that, you can have something where it would be like a giant version of that that would. Ding and then go. Bing. <laughs> it's like no, I like to stay in the love. Oh, yeah. Well, Let them ah. figure out like <laughs> what's going on. Okay. Cool. So we'll take a quick brief look at the learn guide and 
we'll uh, take any questions as, as they come in. <clears throat> Liz is saying that the uh, cap touch can sometimes uh, get interference from the servo. That's ah. right. So you want to keep your wire away from the uh, servo. Oh. I think that's one thing. Or you could wrap some Kapton tape yeah. around it. Yeah, there was a lot of ideas that you guys were talking about. Like you wanted to mill something or uh, the... Uh, yeah, um, conductive filament. There's conductive filament, but it's only one color. And mm -hmm. It's very limited, and it could be abrasive to your nozzle. So, mm -hmm. we thought copper tape was just the the the, the best it's way. Fast. It has the self adhesive, mm -hmm. like it has adhesive already on the strip, and it worked out well for like the the copper look of the handle. Yeah, the copper uh, totally matches. Yeah. Go see this one right here. Yeah, this is some really nice copper filament. This is more of like a gold filament. Um, I really like the silky gold stuff. And uh, with that PEI powder coated bed for your 3D printer, you get such a lovely texture mm -hmm. that really adds yeah, it's nice texture, you know, depth to your uh, to your part. Yeah, I like the uh, it's like a teal. Yeah, uh, you know, everything snap fits. There's some screws here and there, but uh, everything prints without any supports, which is always a good thing. And uh, yeah, you can theme it out to whatever if you want to build your own. <clears throat> and all the files are up there. So, yeah, Yanni says perfect for food ordering for the, right. for the food train to deliver. <laughs> so it's a good way to uh, remember we used to have train. back in the day, their office jobs, we would have the little uh, randomizer to pick yeah, like what food yeah. physical should tag a uh, uh, Gideon in it. <laughs> like, bro, we what have a physical one. Maybe it could be like, <laughs> what type of music are you into right now? That's a good idea. Like, I want to hear some metal. <clears throat> I want to hear some lo-fi hip hop. Hey, hey, that was really fast that time. Yeah. Cool. All right, let's check. I, I, maybe the um, it looks like the streams are all good now. I see oh, it way more high quality. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it goes up and down. Yeah. There's a couple people on Twitch saying it doesn't work. I sent them over to YouTube, so I'm like cross sending well, people. That's funny. <laughs> people on Twitch, I would send to YouTube, and on YouTube, I would send them yeah. to Twitch to check out the stream. Someday we'll be on TikTok live. <laughs> Not today. All right, so head over to the Learn Guide, take it out, you see all the products that are used in this. That USB 32S2 is quite a doozy. Check it out, it's in stock right now. It's a really nice form factor. And you got 13 GPIO and you know, Wi-Fi, you got the Stemma, so you can easily plug in a sensor without any um, soldering. Really, really nice. The analog feedback servos are out of stock, but here's a secret. If you go to the product page, there's this big buy on DigiKey button. Let's see if DigiKey has it in stock. Click on the uh, the product, and they have about nine in stock. So if you really want to get one, you can get it through DigiKey, and they ship very very fast, and all over the world. Uh, you know what? There's also different uh, sizes of the analog feedback servo. So if you scroll down, well, definitely check out these videos from Colin. This mm -hmm. is a really good uh, overview of mm -hmm. just the analog feedback servo. He's using it to like record kind of uh, almost like if you were to record uh, an animatronic movement and mm -hmm. it'll play it back on the same servo. Yeah, very, very cool. He does so a little breakdown. He takes it apart and mm -hmm. shows up there's like a potentiometer. There's actually a potentiometer in there and that's what the white wire is. Very cool. Back servo. So if you're just getting started, you want some demo code for CircuitPython or Arduino, this kind of prerequisite guide will give will covers all the things about the analog feedback servo. And further down, you see that we do have different uh, versions of it. There are micro servos, which I think would have worked fine on this one, one. But we do have the micro servos, and the only difference between these two is one's a metal gear and the other one's a plastic gear. So depending on what you're trying to do, if you want to have more weight or more torque, you want to go with the metal one. Look at that, that's a nice grease there. But they all are gonna work about the same 180 degrees. Oh, all good stuff. So we have data sheets on all that too. Copper tape. Love this stuff. We have a roll of it. Um, again, it has the uh, the adhesive is conductive, which um, <laughs> it definitely matters to have conductivity in that glue. So mm -hmm. it's good for all these type of um, cap touch projects. We got yeah, some it's a, screws. It's a What's good up? point because otherwise it'd be insulated from it. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Thicker one if you want to do like really big pads. And it also has the ad adhesive. And they're in stock right now. So you can get a roll of this stuff. And uh, yeah. The only thing. Yeah, I was gonna say, I don't like that it's oxidized. It looks fine. Uh, some silicone wire uh, for the cup, you know, for the copper tape and the a handful of screws, uh, an A4 size or whatever, if you're somewhere else. And that's really the homepage. So circuit diagram just walks you through all the wired connections. <clears throat> all the CAD files are up there. If you want to get the source file, it's uh, set up as a step. So you can check those out. I also have STLs if you want to print it 
and the STLs are oriented to print as is, which is a really nice thing. You're going to need a build volume of at least 110 uh, cubed, so kind of a mid-range printer, yeah, 110. And then the label and the graphics. So uh, I was able to get a nice DXF export from the Fusion 360 uh, model. And then uh, I used Illustrator, but you can use Inkscape or any of the other open source tools to kind of uh, rework the graphics. So I'm using a graphics editor. Um, or maybe you could use an online tool. But uh, just one note, when you're printing it out, just be sure that you're not scaling it when you're printing because uh, uh, printers tend to like to scale to fit to fill up the whole page so just make sure when you're printing that it's not scaling the graphics and i have it as a pdf as the svg and as the original dxf so if any of those formats don't fail one of the other ones should and then if you want to get the 3d models of the electronics we have a dedicated uh, github repo with all of the 3d models of the parts namely the cutie pie esp32 s2 and that's pretty much the cad page so all the Source files are there. CircuitPython just walks you through installing CircuitPython on the board. You just do a double tap reset to get the board in the bootloader mode, and you can install um, the stable or the latest or the out beta version if you want to try out uh, uh, CircuitPython 8. Uh, the code for this project was done by Liz Clark. So shout out to Liz mm -hmm. for putting together the, uh, the code. It's very well documented. Um, you'll want to, uh, you know, change out which uh, servo is number one and number two. Just be sure to uncomment this and make one true and one false. So you'll want to calibrate one first and then mm. calibrate the second one. So kind of neat. And down here you can see the, uh, the minimum and the maximum values for calibrating it. And then uh, you can change out the Adafruit IO feeds names if you'd like, but we just kind of generically named it touch one and touch two. And then you can set up the pins right here. It's so lovely. I love CircuitPython. You can just read it. <laughs> it's really great. If you wanted to mm -hmm. uh, inc uh, lower the um, the uh, the time for pinging I/O, you can change that. Um, but I think we have it set to five seconds, which is fairly well. And yeah, check it out. Um, you could always use the project bundle as well if you just want to download ET motor. Uh, Adafruit requests and simple I/O for doing, um, I guess, the PWM stuff. And then, uh, because it's Adafruit I/O, you have a secrets file, so you want to generate your own secrets file. And uh, you should be able to do this with the free account for Adafruit I/O. So you stuff, and that's all in the secrets file. So you have to generate that. I don't think that's a part of the bundle. So if you are doing that and with any IoT project, uh, that's the way to do it. You just want to get your secrets file. And then Liz did a great job of. Breaking down. down all the code here, so uh, so you know how to do it. You can see here the feeds. You have an out feed and a touch state, so it's all there. On to the wiring. This is fun. Um, the headers are those jumper cables. Um, if you're prototyping, I would say keep them. But if you're doing a build and you don't want the cross <coughs> the weight. They chunk we straight straight to it. I so will tell them to check I it out. Do. Just uh, sure. yeah, it's the PID. Um, just so we could cover it. It's in stock. It's a PID. Come on, tell me. 5514. Yeah. Oh, not that one. <laughs> the other one. <laughs> this one. <laughs> it is uh, 5515. Yeah, but you still got to plug it in to... No, that's why somewhere. I'm saying this one, because it plugs into the... Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah. yeah. This is good if you... You would need, like, females headed... Right. Uh, attached to... Let's like that, like a header. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Neat. I guess you yeah, could do that. talking about. So, yeah, all of the servers are going to come with, with uh, those, uh, those, those socket headers. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm just sorry it directly to the pens on the cutie pie just to kind of keep, the low, mm -hmm. keep it a low profile and whatnot. So we walk through that. The copper tape, you can solder to it. Just be really quick. Yeah, it's you don't awesome. Want to burn off the uh, the back, but and I had to make two of them, huh? and uh, that was easy enough. So you just want to do it like on the edge, because then I like that it wraps back around it and it kind of hides mm -hmm. the, uh, yeah. the solder bridge. And then just solder that up to uh, the pins that we set up in the code, and uh, that's kind of it for that. For the assembly, you want to start off with like the handle. So this handle prints upside down because the the tip is flat, and then uh, you want to wrap that around. Um, the handle 
but being in mind of where the wire is going to be because I wouldn't want the the wire to be in the front so you just kind of have to you could always I guess move it because mm -hmm. there's a screw that ties to the uh, to the mm. to the handle so there's three parts to the handle you have and then you're going to use the hardware that came with that servo because it has like these pointy screw threads that kind of tap into um, the print and the uh, the injection molded uh, horn so once that's set up, we can attach the servo horn or the servo itself to the front plate with some screws. At this point, you want to put the label on, and then you'll want to snap fit that into the frame, and the frame snaps into kind of the uh, the bezel here. So those all all these fitted. little things align with how it's supposed to go. Mm. Yep. And then just a note that when you uh, place the the servo horn assembly onto the the shaft of the motor. Um, you're going to want to have to refit it a few times to calibrate it. So mm. you want that, that way you'll be able to know where's the maximum, there's mm -hmm. like degree zero, yeah. and where's the 180 degree. So you'll have to fuss with that a little bit, but that's kind of the name of the game when you're, when you're calibrating yeah. uh, servos. Mm -hmm. And then the Cutie Pie has its own little built-in snap fit holder. I always print out these little holders for the, um, for the Cutie Pie because Where's my camera? Because a lot of the times, like, if I were to print this big thing with these tabs built in, you won't be able to flex it. And the idea is that these little 3D printed holders allow you to flex uh, the, the holder so that you can squeeze the corners into these little tabs and then just press fit the other corners in there. And then you have this opening down here that allows, uh, you know, the thing to flex. So it's always easier to kind of have a a separate retainer for your PCB and then have mounting tabs for the bigger thing. So let's say I wanted to print this again, now I don't have to worry about, yeah. you know. Uh, That's my top reason for right? why. <laughs> yeah, so I try to make everything modular, so this is a good thing for that. And of course this one had to be custom to the ESP32-S2 because it has some uh, extra cir circuitry under the, uh, the PCB. Um, so if I wanted to pop this out, I'd have to take these out mm -hmm. and then take that out and then kind of flex it open. Uh, but it's all a part of the, the STLs when you download them if you want to grab this. Yeah, you can see there's a little notch or something right here that had to be pulled in so that it, uh, the component at the bottom would uh, the, would fit and not, mm -hmm. not get uh, chewed off or whatever. Yep, every time we every think time. that. Yeah, right? it, every little project has to require a difference in the way that the geometry is laid out mm -hmm. just because there's this one little resistor yeah this one like, little power yeah, the, the original one i made for this uh was for the rp2040 and it doesn't have those extra mm -hmm. you know ics on the bottom but there you go just it's a called there. job security <laughs> <laughs> okay. and then the usage page shout out to the list for putting this one together it just kind of talks about how you would use it so we're using this for doing some communications between floors and whatnot. Yeah, right. Is it taco time yet? Yes. Should uh, send this to um, to the office. I'm sure there's a like some like Garrett or something could use. Right. And, uh, like, oh no, we have leak. Boop, 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 boop. <laughs> no. <laughs> um. Yeah. So. Check out the guide. It is live. It's this week's project. <clears throat> All right, do we have enough time? I, I kind of mostly showed it off last week. The uh, last week's project was uh, simply just showing that yeah, you can still scan stuff with the photos and stuff. Yeah, so. yeah it, for this, it's pretty much just showing the detail of how good the uh, server, ser, not servos, Whatever servers that they're using, whatever algorithms, servers, servers that uh, Polycam is using to process all these photos, I'd like is to note that so good. Polycam wow. isn't exclusive to iOS. I didn't know that. It's, it's, it's Android, for Android it's or computer. Just the web. Yeah, yeah, you can use it on the web. It the mobile app is literally just a photo uploader okay. <laughs> and viewer. It's not doing anything on your phone. You're doing it all on there servers <laughs> i also follow a lot of the vfx artists and yeah, they the, tend to use the polycam VFX, yeah. for every shoot they do they just get a quick polycam scan of the uh for continuity or for just reference for later. blocking shots blocking for doing shots. your hdr your domes for doing your uh, global illumination and the one that really got me like was this one right here like there was you know 
little kid this was at disney where i took all these so of course it's crowded with people like jumping all over the thing and it got all the detail the i didn't tail wrapping around i didn't get any photos of the back wow. there's a pillar back here how did it know That's you can wild. see the tail you can kind of see where the pillar bumps bumps up against the tail and it got all that look at this sphere it's freaking so good and like it's really cool that you'd be able to because when you're there these are ginormous like you know these are huge like they probably had to have like it brought in there in pieces on how big this and is forklift, yeah. yeah so you can really step back and appreciate all the tiny little detail here? oh yeah there were supports oh, all okay. over this guy oh, okay. i didn't want to chop them up into different pieces all these had supports, hey, supports. so Oops. it does a little the um marble filament uh, did a pretty good job on getting all the detail for this. Not real marble, folks. It's marble looking. looking. So it <laughs> There's like little and speckles things. and stuff. Yeah, you can kind of see it there. And then uh, these guys, yeah. So super cool to be able to uh, photograph stuff. Uh, I think the um, uh, during the show until I said that. Yeah, the reason why Phil wanted this is that there's always like a higher level of why he wants projects in in terms of the the. He was at a museum, and he was like, they were encouraging him to scan stuff. He's like, wait, what? That's cool. So and we then, went down this kind of route of like, okay, let's show folks how to do that. Let's promote it more. I didn't even talk about in the show. I thought I don't have one to, to actually make a glow, and you wouldn't even see it in oh. the um, with this lighting anyway. But I have uh, cutouts for Secret Playgrounds to be in there, and this does a really good job. Please check out that cool web app that he has. It's on GitHub. You can add to it. And uh, wow. yeah, did some... Uh, yeah, That's there's wild. no tops on that, so you can see like the infill in there That's to have the uh, the glowy happen in there. And then there's several ways you can do it too. Uh, this it's Buddha, like a Buddha Don't statue. Buddha. Yeah, it's a zero percent infill on that one, so you can get some nice glowy in there. And this is a uh, glow in the dark filament, so after it's done glowing, you can still have a little bit of afterglow. So yeah. a nice uh, way to uh, I'm gonna be scanning every everything we go everywhere we go i'm gonna be scanning stuff now because it's so really? cool to be able to take home you know these because they don't sell them which is a kind of a missed opportunity <laughs> i think because yeah, yeah, yeah. um the phone case on people would buy them out <laughs> yeah, I think so. and uh yeah just a nice little reminder that hey yeah, photo scanning is a thing right Here's the two guys. Yeah, Andrew made one on um, doing the scales for like miniatures and stuff like that. And then mine was on uh, doing the uh, statues. So pretty much the same what? process. Yeah, using Polycam, mm -hmm. iOS, Android, Web. Um, and took 123 photos. So the more Look photos you have, that and is. if you have like a little kind of turntable set up, I think you get way more detail if yeah. you have the, the time. Yeah. But it's cool to know that if you don't Look have the time, detailed. you can still get a really good model. Look at how detailed. Yeah, it's super detailed. That is so cool. It also does the texture wrapping, so it takes mm -hmm. photos and, and paste it in there as a yeah. map, which is really cool. It's like if you're doing video game design, if you're doing like we we're saying the visual effects, this is so useful. Yeah. And then if you want to do some low poly stuff, it, uh, the uh, low poly dot X Y Z mm -hmm. is the website, and it's really easy to use. You just kind of play around with the sliders to get a, so a cool. good desired low poly look, depending on what you want. Very cool. And then uh, your guide, Pedro, walks through using Blender and some of the tools in Blender to clean up a, a, a sort of quick scan. So you, if you quickly scan it, you're going to get something like this. This is actually the lion. You can see you can isolate um, the lion by just kind of making a block and then like doing a boolean to subtract from that, mm -hmm. just leaving the, the model that you want to isolate. It's a really good um, project for getting familiarizing yourself right. with Blender, getting and you learn tools. Some cool th you can use. I this mean, it's only because part. I'm I'm coming from Maya. Like I know how things work and where use the fill menus face are. command to to kind of fill in these holes. Mm -hmm. And then what is that tool that kind of helps you? Adjust. the elastic um tool okay. which we don't have that in maya there so. it is the elastic deform tool mm -hmm. that helps you pull faces so that you can reduce the uh the the support overhang material. yeah the so yeah. so instead of it being 90 degrees some of the things like on uh like right here oh, let's, let's um, switch so it's not like so flat you're pulling this out i'm pulling out it's like, like you're the sculpting neck. the polygons yeah and you, beyond that too I which i did not efficient. cover because it would that would be another uh rabbit hole that you know that that's not it? the purpose 
doing joints so you're doing inverse kinematics so oh, you're making a skeleton so you can actually go in there and reposition <laughs> your model that's cool like you that's know that, that's what i went to school for yeah. for doing it 3d do animation games. so i know how to do all that but you know, that that starts veering off what you know the whole project was about so i didn't want to go into that Next but that will make a game <laughs> no i mean it's for like statues if you don't like yeah. the way that they're, they're their their position is you can go ahead and re funny. reposition them so that's like, like you know extra yeah. credit rabbit hole that the users can go down because it's definitely super handy to do that so yeah we're gonna try out using blender in more projects so it's a fun thing mm -hmm. and that's last week's project yay some 3d scans and modifying them all right cool 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 all right let's go ahead and jump into this week's what are we oh prototyping yeah oh crap yeah, I'm thinking like the show's over. <laughs> no, we have about 20 minutes. Okay. So, so what are we prototyping? So Lamar mm -hmm. wants to do a DIY. Let's go ahead and jump over oh, to yeah. the wide we, angle. Uh, we purchased our cams, camo studio so we can do things like this now. We can switch between that and the mobile phone's lenses. I'm yeah, fancy. so Lamar wanted a DIY Pi 400. Well, it doesn't have to be a Pi. It could be for any of the single board computers that are out there since Pis are a little hard to get. So this is what I came up with. It's a nice little case that encloses your single board computer with all of your oh, the ports. ports and everything hanging out there. Then you still have access to your controls for your keyboard. What are these called? Like little ledges so that it yeah. doesn't fall all the way through. You have a nice little clearance so that you don't have, you know, any of this metal touching the the uh, the uh, the shields on oh, the that's um, funny. Is it real metal? I think it's plastic. Uh, yeah, it's I mean, plastic. this right here? Which one? This right here? Uh, that might. I, I think, think it's, it's plastic. like. I don't know. Yeah, I'm not going to find out. <laughs> okay. I'm not going to jans it, but yeah, okay, you have cool. like a five millimeter clearance That's on there. Great. So if you have like a heat sink or yes. something and you should have uh, enough room for that. And if you want to put like a battery in here or as I'm doing here, because I couldn't get the little, the ribbon um, HDMI to uh, I love that you can micro have mini access to uh, that thing there. Oh yeah. Yeah. Your, the, um, your uh, SD card. Don't take it out. Oh no, no, no. I'm just <laughs> popping it in there. Okay. Got pulled out a little bit. So got the HDMI cable running on one of our little DIY mm -hmm. uh, 3D print enclosures for these uh, these little displays. Yeah, so this has a, yep, there's a power boost backpack in there, so you and have a nice battery. little... It's nuts. Uh, yeah, the battery in there, so uh, you have a nice little portable way to, uh, you know, if you need a single board computer, a desktop, uh, this is great for doing, um, like what we're showing out here, like, like video and stuff. You can do the Octoprint rig, yeah. your CNC, your laser. Yeah, anything. That's always good. Of those things. So and Pi is going to be great for that. Yeah, the, the Pi 4. Man, this thing is... Look how beautiful this is. Yeah. Wow. This is so cool. So let me get out of there. You have your whole desktop and everything in there. So, so we sell the keyboard, nice well. right? We have these in stock. Yeah, the keyboard, think. those are in stock. Um, it's just regular, like the wireless little dongle that attaches on there. And uh, yeah, nice little totem pole for the screen that we have as well in that project. This All things right? that go along with it. That's the one right there. Cool. This is a really nice uh, trackpad. You have your uh, touch points on it. So nice for right clicking. I guess it's running off a of battery, right? Oh uh, yeah, there's a battery in there. You can charge the um, the whole keyboard. Charges over USB. Yep, charges trackpad, over that. It's all nice. Kind of, you know, pretty close to the, what is it, 84 millimeter like mm -hmm. footprint size and the way that the arrangement of the rubber USB. Feet. I recommend I, rubber feet. Yeah, I know. I was still trying this I out. I still got to figure feet. out a... Uh, <laughs> yeah, this is still prototype. Yeah, um, of course. I got to figure out a way to maybe add some wedges on here so you don't have any deform mm, deforming if with sure. the the, 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 um, the walls. So maybe just thicken it up. Maybe do like four, four, four millimeter thickness on it. I think it's like 1.5. So yeah. It's pretty thin for yeah, that. It's all perimeter. And then the other thing is this really cool wood filament that you got from Protopasta. Yeah. Look at this. It's like a. It's called espresso bean filament. Uh, it's got some gold flakes in it. It's very, very, very good that, stuff. Yeah. Uh, it's not really focusing. Well, it's because it's that. Uh, oh, the wide yeah, angle. I yeah, can it's switch good just too. to get a good look at this filament. So, Protopasta, they make fantastic filament. I really like that their spools are eco-friendly. Yeah. They're just cardboard. Which oh, is, I love that. Which is really nice. I don't know why maybe everyone doesn't do that. We're it's, trying to... There's a good thing going out. Like, like it... We're, we're, I would know. think it'd 
be cheaper. The communities maybe? like kind of egging the people to hey, Nick Prusa is, is about to start using them. It, more it's so sad stuff. when you run out and you yeah. have this. Wait, look at the uh, you know the, the layer lines on it. Yeah, it looks yeah. pretty good. So this is a, looking for something nice for enclosures. We recommend this stuff. A point two five layer height because it's just a box. Oh, <laughs> and it came okay. out and pretty it good. Pretty quicker, huh? Yeah, yeah. Quick, much faster. Yeah, and then the bottom one is another protopasta. Um, yeah, it's like the uh, lighter. wood. They have, yeah, like they have four different wood. We have um, three of them. Wanna, we should get the fourth one to see what sure. it's like. But so, there yeah. it is. Nice Shout little pasta making great filament. Nice little um, enclosure to make your own uh, Raspberry Pi four or single board computer right. with a yeah. keyboard right on top. <laughs> yeah, we're, we'll be getting a Tinker board, an ASUS Tinker board. Oh, so it has the exact same um, mm -hmm. footprint. We'll see. <laughs> Let's see. <So> we'll, uh, <laughs> Try that we'll adjust out. it to that because that's what Lamar wanted to. Yeah. Her ultimate goal was just to like have a any. Pie or yeah, I was pie. looking at all those and man, they're all like back. Knives are like three hundred bucks. If you go to Amazon, it's like, oh my god, what happened? <laughs> what happened? The part shortage. Yeah. Well, from Duester, it's got one on order. Oh to yes, do it just is. What you did? <laughs> the red and the white one. Can you print that out? <laughs> oh, is this like a, a Kickstarter or something? Sorry, we're, we're interested. The PiPad family is here. Ooh, look at this style. Hey. Got your yeah. battery. Oh, yeah, we're just, yeah, it's a thing. So a DIY mm -hmm. Pi That's 400. probably, I mean, Lamar comes up. That's why I was like, oh crap, when we heard that. She wanted a pie project. It's like, cool. Is is the is it lifting up, or is the part shortage coming into end? Mm. But yeah, it's probably one of the reasons why. Yeah, so it's and it's not a Kickstarter. Okay, sweet. What a CM4 and IoT board. Wooden keys. Yeah, I'm sure the CM4 is like way smaller. I don't oh, know if there's any yeah, ports yeah. on the CM4. But the point was just kind of take the your standard pie format, mm -hmm. and design an enclosure for the yeah. keyboard. Everything will be editable. So if you need to nudge things around and make it fit. Yeah, this is nice part. You just like make your own Pi mm -hmm. 100. So. And then uh, John is in here saying the Elastic Deform tool is it like soft select in Maya? I think it is. Although the the behavior, yeah, the behavior how it works. I'm sure you could tweak it to work like that. I didn't have to do any tweaking. I didn't have to select like the um, paintbrush size. Yeah, I didn't have to do paint my weights in there or anything oh, like that. Weights. So it, just days. the the way it behaved. I mean, I'm sure it, it, it's been updated. Maya's been updated for the behavior on that. Mm. I haven't used Maya since 2018, I think, is the last version I was able to, that the license that we bought was able to let us download. It doesn't run on the M1s anymore, so it's yeah. like, oh, crap. I don't know. Blender. I know. Check it's it so out. funny. Blender is, runs is so good. Linux Surprise. It runs on everything, yeah. and it Great community. It's fast. Like It doesn't have to... Check your your F. What, what? It's all giddy. I know because it's like oh god, god. you are remembering all those yeah. days. Like oh no, you have to. You really your do. license has to. So much more. Flexible. Is your license? No, you need to log out. It's like oh my god, why are you using all this processing power just to find out if my light if I spent the six thousand dollars or not on it? It's like God, just let me use the freaking program. Come on. Mm. Shout out to Blender. <laughs> Look what you've done, John. Well, because <laughs> it, you know, we still experience every day with Adobe. It's like. Infusion, it's like, oh, another computer. You you have to log out. No, no, no. It's okay. like, what are you doing, bro? That's, we're two people with two licenses. Right. God, we're not a VFX house trying to scam and, you guys out of. <laughs> and that's the shop talk, I guess, right there. Our frustrations with uh, licensed with, apps. Yeah, it's like, dude. All right, well, let's hose it on over, swag way over to the community makes where uh, we always have a good time here. Oh, look at this. I'll get a reload. Yeah, <clears throat> that's wild though, I think. I'm loading my notes, folks. People are liking the low profile keyboard. Yes, this feels really good with typing too. And uh, made sure that it had the, um, what is it, like 15 degree angle. So you have a nice typing. Uh, yeah, it's at an angle, which yeah. is good. I can't get the uh, links to go. Uh, I'm reading the comments as we go. Yes, I'm gonna get some steal some ideas from this uh, oh. Raspberry Pi case. Yeah. Oh, I see. What <laughs> it you're definitely okay. needs a um, a fan. I definitely oh, want to add a fan in there because while I'm like when I was setting up all the um, the Raspberry so Pi like, config, of... I could feel like, oh no, is my thing gonna melt? <laughs> huh. I can't 
Yes, yes Paul Cutler. Cutler. Yep, gotta love open oh. source. Oh, absolutely, yeah. They focus on uh, not licensing servers. <laughs> yep. All right, it loaded. So we're gonna take a couple to end the show off with uh, some community makes. So some uh, some stuff that folks have sent us. Or I need to rephrase it. Here's some projects that people have. I can't do it though. Like we just don't have internet. It's not working. Not weird. We're really choking our, our stuff. It looks pretty good here. At least okay. the streaming quality looks All good. All right, <laughs> cool. So the first one we have is a community to make. Um, posted up by Eugene GT. They made our super perpendicular, and you're doing a bunch of them. You can 3D print our little rig here. Um, you just need a couple of those, uh, ball bearings and a piece of aluminum extrusion. Um, and it uses a, a little kind of a pulley system and some counterweights to make it really smooth. Um, action and uh, you can modify uh, the parts to fit your soldering iron and then use whatever kind of wood base um, to kind of secure the, the assembly to but this is great I, I use this for the, the upcoming droid project that I'm working on and really any project do it next time and just grab it and show it real no. quick <laughs> it's so cool it's fun it's mostly so people can egg you on and be like hey where's no, that droid thanks. project come on finish it come on <laughs> All right, here's the next one. So a shout out to Eugene for posting that up. And cool. It works for oh, um, shout out to Eugene too for doing We're just streaming. Yeah. This is an iPhone case posted up by Smorgana. Very nice, this is always fun. This is a TPU case that's flexible. And it's designed for flexibles. Yeah, it's the one we're using right here on this iPhone mini. Yeah. I guess, uh, the Joker is another person who put, I guess a lot of people are doing heat set inserts. So uh, the I mean, user uh, posted this up. So super handy. Looks like they're still building it, but oh, that's kind of in it progress. Looks, looks like they're using Ninja Flex as the, uh, oh my God, the, right. whatchamacallit. Yeah. Um, oh, that's great. The string. String, yeah. yeah. you need a piece of string to wrap over the pulley. Um, yeah. So there's that bit. And then we have another one here. This is the neon signs. We did um, 3D printed neon signs. And I can't see their username. Uh, MV Vodka posted up nice. their makes of the, so the neon signs. So if you have like a large bed 3D printer, you can print out mm -hmm. as, big as, a si as big as the sign you want. And it uses the NeoPixel neon style. So good. Uh, things so these are really nice so if you want to make a yeah. custom shape wow it's really cool here's the lightning bolt and yeah it's always a fun glowy time to make some custom signs and i think we have two more this is a kind of a blast from the past again posted on prusa oh right? wow this is the uh, uh hb 3d on printables.com uh posted up their make of this uh pokemon inspired potion uh it's actually a, a usb battery bank that's inside there so if you want to charge your devices it has a little clip on yeah, it yeah it does it's kind of a fun cosplay practical like combined cosplay prop with practicality. practicality it's like oh it's an actual battery mm -hmm. how fun nice little theme so maybe that inspires folks to kind of i still see people playing community. pokemon so yeah our kiddo does so very fun shape very easy to kind of modify Oh, I added a light in there, too? Wild. Of course it did. <laughs> go, go crazy. Um, let's see, what else? The last <clears> one <throat> is the Raspberry Pi case. The face case. Posted up on um, Thingiverse by Thingiverse user. Hey, it's double A. And I guess they made a remix of it. Sweet. So they added um, uh, these slots so it can slot into a... Uh, the extrusion of the printer, mm. like the aluminum extrusion. Do you know where our oh, remix black bone, black bone, our beagle bone, <laughs> beagle bone black is? Because that that's another one that I, I could probably use in the shot. Let's see if it'll fit in here. I do not know where beagle bone is. I know we had <laughs> at least one. Bone. We have lost our beagle. And that's this week's community makes. Shout out to everybody Ooh. for posting up their makes. I know how it can be. Like, you know, it looks really good. Yep. Oh, I forgot the time lapses. We have five minutes to share. 
our <clears throat> flamingo and our headstock. <laughs> what do you want to do, the flamingo? Flamingo, I remember Ann Brella saying that. She liked flamingos, so. Oh, shout out to Ann. <laughs> Print out for her. Yeah, let me. I don't have the links to the. Oh, uh, no, just go to the camera. It's fine. It well, is. We're looking a... at the time lapse. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, any it is fun a stuff about the time lapse? Uh, I mean, it just took a while to time lapse. Okay. Uh, one of the comments people were saying, oh, I wanted to see the neck. They think it's connected. No, it's all in different little pieces that uh, oh, snap, snap fit together. Oh, it's not printed in place. Folks. Yeah. Dang it. I, I did time lapse it, be but because of where I positioned it on the bed, every time that the print head went close to it, it snapped. So it, you're oh. showing the bed going back and forth. Like, dang mm. it, I can't show this. So that's the reason why I did not show that. But yeah. you of Alice in Wonderland. Neck. You can kind of see there. Did an excellent job. The uh, model and get all working. Um, do not recommend the uh, the the um, the silk. Horrible. It is horrible. <laughs> Act and ripping apart. You can see the foot right there. Like, and I printed hot and like, because this is like. Or try a different uh, brand. Maybe try a different brand. Yeah, because oh, it's not Ringo. not the best. Nice it looks and shiny. pretty. Yeah, nice and shiny. <laughs> nice and shiny. All right, and this is some Colts 3D. You check mm. out the YouTube video for. Uh, so check out Roji Studios on Colts 3D. Got a couple of really nice designs. Cool. And then, and then like the up. little tabs all break off. Like, oh. It's not the designer's <laughs> fault. It's the it's filament. The filament. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was funny as you pulled the lifeless. Uh, She's broken. <laughs> Next up is this really cool key. Um, holder, like it mounts to the wall. You got these nice little mounts. I love and... how it's the Gib the Gibson font, but it says guitar. Right, just to like avoid the any, custom. Uh huh. Any copyright issues? And the uh, designer has a couple of different models of twist? heads. No, that would be so cool though. It's so this is all together. It. No, this it's like three piece? different. Oh, it's three different. No, two different sides. No, well, three. Yeah. Let me play the video. Three layers. <laughs> I don't show how you assemble it because oh, it's like, oh man, that's too much crap. But you swap out the filament. Or no? Yes, I swapped the filament for the top portion there. Ah, you can kind of okay. see there where I swap yeah, it out. Yeah, there you go. I slowed it down so you can actually see it. And then you swap it back to the of, uh, in the description of the I thing of verse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the real size of a real guitar. Mm -hmm. And it has, like I was saying, the nice little mounting points. These, like, snap together. Um, I glued it in just so they wouldn't fall apart. We and then these a... come out so you can, oh. like, change these. That's a good so idea, yeah. Your, uh, guitar setup. Mm hmm Very cool. Excellent. Printing. And where did, can folks find the It's Thingiverse. Design? Thingiverse? Okay. And this one is free. Cool. And they uh, tell you at what layer to change out the colors. Very nice. Okay. For this type of stuff, yeah. The this, glittery stuff tends to work out a little silky. bit silky. This is silky. silky. This okay. is silky. So it, uh, there's no joints here. There's nothing that needs right. to be moving. So it's fine. You could tell that it might be brittle if you like, you know. <laughs> Will Pull this hold it. the weight of a key? Oh yeah. Yeah, well, yeah. It's, okay. it's on there really good. Okay. Yeah, keys aren't that heavy. Yeah. A couple grams, ounces. Yep. I mean, if you have like a, you know, if you're a, a it'll, it might take it down. <laughs> but that's why I have different, uh, you know, up to six different uh, no. posts. Well, cool. That's this week's that's this week. makes very fun. Um, it's super cool. Parts. A couple Check of tips there it out. for folks. Nice way to do some uh, practical around the house prints and some uh, calibrating. Cool. Super cool. All right, we have reached the end of the show. Yay. Right at 12 p.m. <laughs> John, <laughs> he's laughing out loud regarding the Maya, the Maya licensing. Yeah. You know when they teach you in college how to crack Maya? Oh, they do? You know. <laughs> Don't give us the name. Of you just how you get your... <laughs> Tonight we have a very special show in Chell. It's gonna be hosted by Liz Clark. Shout out Liz. Liz and uh, Melissa. Are, oh, uh, they're both, both doing it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sweet. Okay. So it should be really cool. We got some special guests coming over. I don't know if we can say it, but... Yeah, we have a special guest. Mm -hmm. Last week, uh, Adam Savage and uh, a couple other maker folks, Check like Sophie Wong, yeah. were there. Got some we'll have some really cool. representation, maybe. Oh, this but is so cool. But it's back cool to back. Yeah. So um, that's tonight. We'll be on there as well. Yep, we'll showing us off. Um, that's at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time. So if you want to join, you can uh, hang out in the Discord chat room. And uh, Liz will pop in the link uh, a little bit earlier it's around 7 20 ish but then at 8 p.m is ask an engineer uh, with lamar and phil full hour of, of open source hardware news Yay. new products um the great search no uh ion mpi mm -hmm. the great searches on the sundays that's uh that's good cool check out jp tomorrow 
for a workshop live stream every Thursday at 4 p.m. Eastern Time. Always a fun time. Last week we had uh, got Scott return. Scott's back. But I, think, Scott. I think Tim is going to do it this week. But, ah, okay. But, you know, check out, check out the Still. dive on CircuitPython and more. On Sundays, it's from the desk of Lady Ada. Sundays. Now it's earlier, it's earlier, huh? Now. That's a That's pretty, pretty cool. good time. Yeah, like I like day. it. Like yeah. It. So check out uh, the Great Search, uh, Lamar, and some uh, sneak peeks at like some samples and things. Mm -hmm. It was fun. And then if you want to get some crazy ridiculous deals on the Tuesdays, JP's product pick of the week, you can get up to fifty percent off on select items. That's Tuesdays at 4 p.m. Eastern or 1 p.m. Pacific. A uh, real quick comment f on the YouTube chat. Himatsu is asking, uh, what about the free giveaways? Uh, not with free products. Giveaways. Yeah, not with products shortages. Uh, but you do get uh, interfood.com slash free. Certain amount yeah, of orders. You, yeah, you get you get freebies. The free Have these free boards. But you gotta, there's the pricing tiers on there to check out. Yeah, adfree.com slash free. Mm -hmm. We used to do the stickers, but... Stuff happens. Yeah. Maybe one day. Part shortages and yeah. costs of shipping and all that. Yeah. So we do the show every Wednesday. We'll rack. Yay. Hopefully we'll be back next week as well with uh, some more, more cool projects. 11 a.m. every Wednesday. Quite a bit of built-up ones. Yeah. Um, I think next week is the CircuitPython one, or CircuitPython day, right? Am I confused? B -b 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 19 oh yeah Some next week friday next week, python day so yeah. python day make sure you tune in for that it's gonna be a whole day of circuit python streams and activities um everybody from the circuit python, some really cool stuff that's yeah planned. check out the blog on mm -hmm. native fruit uh, for more uh, i guess that's it folks thank you for joining us as we have took a break to recover but we're back and we hope yeah, everybody's back. staying safe until next time folks i guess remember to Make a great day. Make a great day. See you later tonight. Bye, folks.